podcast. I'm doing a short video today looking at ways to help your dogs and you cope better with um, increased heat. So now we're coming into summer quite rapidly. Um, it's going to be getting hotter and hotter. This week's getting hotter and hotter already. So there's some things that are going to probably be quite straightforward and quite obvious um, and things that you'll know about and there may be things that actually seem obvious when you hear it but you go, oh I hadn't thought of that and there might even be some things that you hadn't heard of before and that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help um, pass on information and help keep your dogs stay nice and safe. So one of the big things for summer safety with dogs and when it's warm any time of the year um, is not overdoing activities and exercise and encouraging them to do more than they need to be doing. Um, when it's warm dogs tend to get a little bit quieter anyway, if not exactly quiet they tend to get quieter. They go what's up there? Um, so they don't need to do as much. They tend to spend a lot more time wanting just to have a little bit of a snooze. So things like dog sports, you know, bring it back down, really good time to work on just some, some basic foundations rather than um, you know getting the dog to do lots of running, lots of jumping, um, lots of you know turns and, and you know really advanced kind of um, exercises and, and, and bits and pieces to go with your sports. And certainly not um, so shadow my cockerel um, and certainly not running your dog in courses over and over and over again no matter what it is that you're doing. Um, even if we're doing hill to music you might not be actually get the dog to do equipment but you know routine for a few minutes if you're repeating that a few times that can be quite a lot if your dog's hot. That includes your dog's walks, that includes <laughs> man trying to get some food. <laughs> what are you after you? Monkey, it's here, look, I've got it. So um, walks are one of the more obvious ones for this time of year and there's this there's information all over the internet, you know, make sure you walk your dog at night or not at all and things like that. I know it's not always that easy, it depends on your situation. Okay, Rippers. Um, you know you found it you're a very clever boy um so if possible then yes walk your dog early early in the day very very late into the evening take them somewhere that's that's sheltered so somewhere like woodlands um are really good somewhere that's got an area where there is shade and maybe there's buildings in the way somewhere where the ground isn't too hot so um a walk but some reduced times so and just maybe a very short walk to give your dogs a quick bit of exercise and you let them go to the loo um, in a wooden area at 8 o'clock at night is going to be much better for your dogs and for you with regards to the heat than if you take your dog around the block on asphalt at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, if they're on something that's, that's very very hot the surface then you run the risk of ruining your dog's pads and you know actually they can burn and they can get quite severe injuries that need veterinary treatment. Um, if they're on sand and it's hot and it gets in their eyes obviously that's going to hurt their eyes. Even grass when it's been cut if it's really dry and obviously hot as well then it tends to go really, really straw-like and quite prickly and that can actually cause problems with your dog's pads and in between the pads. So um, it, it's, it's not even just the heat itself, it's other things that come into play as well. If you have a dog walker, so it might be that you're out during the day or you might be home but you're working, um, then you could ask a dog walker to take your dog somewhere that's more shady, ask if they could come at a different time if it was possible. Could they do a shorter walk or no walk and just come in and spend time with your dog? So giving them interactive toys, giving them somewhere in the shade in the garden to, you know, just have a fuss with you. It doesn't have to be anything exciting um, for a lot of dogs. It's just the, the break in the day, the company that actually makes a lot of it for them, not just the walk itself. And not having a walk every day for, you know, a few days is, isn't going to hurt your dog particularly. But they may need to pop outside to go to the loo absolutely fine just look at where you need to go okay so for example outside my house uh, we do have a grass verge in a tree so we're quite lucky in that respect so I would have somewhere to take my dogs for a quick wee um, if needed where there is shade but if there wasn't shade there then I would consider taking them somewhere else or even driving them somewhere if needed to make sure they're not just going somewhere that's too hot in direct sun and we're going to suffer for it um, so what you can also be doing with your dogs is looking at in the home, in the garden. So you can see my two, Merlin and Ripley here, are chilling in the shade and I always make sure there's shade out here for them. I've actually been working outside today. Um, I've been catching up on some of my online um, classes 
um, and some of my online titles that people are working on but I've been doing it in the shade with the dogs so they're getting the nice breeze, it's nice and shady, it's actually more pleasant out here than it would be inside the house so it's, it's quite nice for them as well. Um, in the garden you can do so many things, you can create shade so I'm just going to move around and show you some things that you can be doing with your dogs, um, hopefully some ideas for you. Yeah, so you can create shade with all sorts of things. You can get dog beds with canopies um, actually attached to them. You can use a parasol. I've just put some treats inside of some toys. Um, so you can do parasols, you can have a big parasol in the middle of the garden like I've got, um, and that provides a nice amount of shade. And then in that shade, you could give your dog something to do. So these are just snaffle mats with a few treats inside. And you can then put them somewhere where there's shade. Flippers. There's a good girl. If you haven't got natural shade. So um, hopefully you can see okay. I've actually um, used a bulldog clip to clip my umbrella to the chair. And that created a nice little bit of extra shade here that Ripley's now using. Okay. In the shade you can be doing lots of different things. So I've been doing grooming with my dogs today in the shade. So it gave them somewhere to um, work and to be actually very cool on this table. Um, and, and that worked really nicely for them. As you can see, they're having a nice time doing that. There's just a few bits of treat, but that keeps them nice and busy. Um, you can create shade with silver sheets or blankets just tucked over something. So I've just got some pegs and I've just clipped them to that to um, make a nice little bit of shade there. Some's up there at the moment. Um, and you can put something in that if you wanted to. So there's lots of ways that you can keep your dog out of the sun. They don't always have to be in the sun, um, even if they like it. Some dogs do like it, but we can encourage them to come away again. Now, other things that we can do to keep our dogs occupied. Just grab some more treaty treats. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive what we do with our dogs at home. So it could be uh, if you've got some access to some pool pool balls and your dog doesn't like the ball with pool particularly, you can use dog beds. So what I've got here is just some of their old beds with the ball pools in and then you can just chuck some treats in there for them to find. So hopefully you can see that okay. And that keeps them nice and busy as well. So in the shade again, that keeps them busy, gives them something to do, gets their mind going, gets their scent work going, and it's also quite nice because they're it's you know uneven surface, they get to move around a little bit, so it's actually giving them a little bit of a miniature workout at the same time. Um, and that keeps them busy and they enjoy doing something like that as well. It's cheap and easy, I had the balls already, I had the beds already. Easy peasy. seen one of these beds before this is a raised bed um, you can get loads of different types of raised beds <laughs> shadow again um, this particular one is from a company called um, high canine and it's a nice mesh you can see my hand um, which means it's nice and cool for your dogs when they're laying on it and it just gives them a nice place to lay in the shade if they're not laying in their ball pool at the same time um, and it folds up so you could take it with you if you're on holiday or camping or a day out or whatever it might be so it's really handy all round and as well as those sorts of styles you can even now get ones with a canopy on top which gives your dogs a little bit of shade thank you shadow um, extra on top of that as well so you can get all sorts of things like that there's just a really nice addition to your garden um, to help your dog stay quite chilled out and quite cool. Um, uh, something else that you could <laughs> oh my God. look at doing if you haven't done this before, if your dogs do like water, you don't. You could use obviously a paddling pool, um, but you can fill something with or put some water in. I haven't got a lot of water in this one because my dogs aren't, aren't keen on water. And then what you can do is just put in things that float. So I've just got a couple of lids from tubs, that's a Pringles lid. Things that float that your dogs can play with. You can actually then put food on the floaty things and your dogs have got the option of going obviously into the water um, to get those out. So you go darling, um, or leaning across as Ripley's doing. Merlin's not sure about that, he's not too keen on water. Um, Ripley's quite happy to put his feet in. 
when she wants to. So that's another way of giving your dog something to do. I know you're in the sun now, aren't you? That was in the shade earlier on. There we go. Um, so, let me check what I was going to say next. Here you go, my little boy. Um, you don't always have to do toys and things like this with your dogs. There are other ways of keeping your dogs busy whilst they're in the shade. So you could do um, tricks and training and things like that. Uh, it depends on what your dog knows and what you might want to teach them. There's all sorts of things that you could be doing. That's a good boy. So things like, things that are static are quite good, aren't they? So things like a, a chin target. Are you ready? I've got too many treats in my hand now, haven't I? Chin, yes, good boy. I'm working on a nice static exercise. Chin, yes, good boy. Ripley, chin, what's your chin? Yes, good girl. So that can be quite a nice one when you're sitting in the shade with your dogs. You can be teaching them to do things like a cross paws. You can work on the nose touch. You can work on a snoot where they stick their nose in. Um, play bow. Stays. Stays are a great one to work on in the shade. Um, you're not, you don't need to do them to do a lot. You don't need to do a lot. Good boy. Um, but <laughs> but they do have to then obviously not change position. Then it's this. Um, if you leave them in here in a sit stay, yes, they may well stay in the shade, but there's no guarantee that they're not going to move into a down or stand up or start sniffing about. So they still need to work on the stay, even if they are in the shade. So there's a big difference between working your dog in dog sports and practicing some light foundations that don't require a huge amount of energy. All right, so you can do water bowls they're shining in my eye. Um, so there's quite a lot you can do with them that can just be between you and them. So things like the, the grooming side, that works really well. If you do massage with your dogs, that's great. Um, you know, just chill out with your dog sometimes. That can work quite nicely as well. Can't it, hey? We all like chilling out together, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, so, let me just check what I've said and what I haven't said. It's the third time I'm filming this because it keeps running out of battery or storage or I've pressed the button wrong, something like that. So I'm sort of seem to be filming this a lot at the moment. So, with water, some dogs really love water, so you might have a paddling pool for them, it might be when you do take them for a walk, you're taking them somewhere like, you know, the sea or a lake, somewhere they can go either paddling or actually swimming. Um, some dogs um, like water to the point where they play games in the back garden, so you know, look at the hose and let them catch the water, or you can get sort of doggy games where they, they push down on, on a paddle and it pushes up water and they can grab it with their mouths. Um, just one thing to be careful of, and this doesn't mean you never play with water, but just to be very cautious of, is there is something called water intoxication um, that can happen. And this is where your dog is gulping and gulping water to the point where then they're, they're taking in too much and it can actually make them very, very seriously ill and they would need veterinary attention. So that could be if your dog is um, catching the water from the hose, sort of actually just gulping it down. All these fountains and they're gulping the water, gulping the water, taking it down far too much than they should be. If your dog likes to jump out into the water to chase after toys, so you're throwing a toy or it's just a toy they want to get and they might be diving for it or they might be jumping in the air and getting it. They're doing a lot of that. Again, they're going to have their mouths open, they're going to be taking in a lot of water and it all can lead to this water intoxication, which obviously is, is not a good thing at all. Um, what can also happen if your dog is taking in water is they might actually come home the same day looking absolutely fine. And you think, oh, okay, that's cool, brilliant. What can then happen, and again, this is a can happen, not will happen, um, is because the water is in their system, over the next day or two, something can occur which is called dry drowning, and that's where they're not actually in water at the time, but they, the, the water that they've taken into their lungs and into their system is still circulating where it shouldn't be, and then your dog suddenly can collapse and come outside and find them collapsed on the floor, and actually they are they're drowning without being near a water source at the time. So. If you are going to use water with your dogs, just be aware of those sorts of things. Everything in moderation. Don't go mad with it. If they're playing, you know, with water, you've got a nice paddling pool for them. Put some shade up because if they're in the full sun while swimming, they're still in the sun. They're still in the heat. They're still because they're swimming or they're paddling and they're playing. They're still going to be exerting energy and you know becoming fatigued about realizing it because they're having fun. Um, and then you can still end up with a dog that's majorly dehydrated um, and over fatigued. That again. Going to be ill and needs veterinary help. 
Um, so again, just you know, if you can put an umbrella up or something or move the pool into the shade, it makes such a difference. It really will help your dogs out hugely. Um, you'll have probably heard of things like cooling mats and cool coats, and they are great things and they can really, really help dogs a lot. And I do use all of them um, at different times. My cool mats and my cool coats for my dogs are in my van currently, which my husband has at work, so I can't show you those. Um, but you can get cooling mats, so many different types now. Some are gel filled, and um, either when you touch them, you can feel the gel and, and it starts cooling, or some of them have got little um, tiny beads in them, and you soak it in water and it takes on board the, um, the, the water and keeps it cool. Be careful with both of those kinds. So, if you can kind of do that, and you can feel the gel inside, all those little balls inside. If you've got a dog that likes to chew things or likes to scratch things, might not be the right thing for them because obviously what's inside isn't good for dogs okay if you've got dogs that just lay here <laughs> like these two absolutely fine um you can also get um cooling mats that are almost completely flat they haven't got you know the foster tear there's nothing really to come out um and again once you're putting something that's heated on top of it whether it's your dog's body or your hand you can then feel it getting colder and colder um the more heat that's applied to it so they can be quite useful in the garden, you can use them overnight in the house, you can have them in your car if you take your dog somewhere, um, but they can be really useful. Uh, dog coats, again, you can get different types. Some of them, the material is, is designed to reflect the heat and keep them, you know, keep them nice and cool. And then other ones, again, you keep them wet and that makes it cool. And if you put your hand underneath, you can feel how cool it actually is. And it can work on any type of fur. Just be aware that they do dry out. The ones that you wet will dry out at some point. So if it is very, very hot and they've got it on for a couple of hours, don't check the top, check underneath, because that's where your dog's body is. That's where the heat's coming from, from your dog's body. Once it starts drying out, it's no longer cooling. It's just holding the heat in. Okay, so that's not ideal. Um, and then it's either gonna need to be taken off or the water put back on again. Okay. Um, one thing that you can also get is, that I do have, is um, cooling bandanas and these are ones again you can get the gel ones and you can get these ones which you just put in water and then it makes them nice and cool um, and these I tend to use with my guys kind of in the car and things like that just a little way to keep them a little bit cooler before they're going somewhere um, but it does mean that they haven't got their body covered that <laughs> they can still move freely it's just around the necks and helping cool the chest area down quite neat and tidily um, one thing to bear in mind, I I do have cooling coats and I do use them, but if it's that warm and you're taking your dog out during the day and it's very hot, then you're thinking, yeah, they need their cool coat on for this walk or for this day out somewhere. Is it really worth taking your dog out wherever it is you're going if they need to have the cool coat on? Okay, consider that. If it's that warm that they need to have it on for several hours, is that too long for your dog to be out in the heat? Um, they're great for, like I say, putting them on your dogs if they've got hot or to prevent them getting hot. If you're on holiday somewhere, they're brilliant. I, you know, we, we've stayed in caravans and tents and get really warm um, in a tent on a hot day. Um, so they can be really great for that sort of thing. But if I'm needing it on my dog for many hours, probably take my dog out for too long as it is. So just think about that for your dogs. Um, and then if you are taking your dog out somewhere, what could you take with you? always got a backpack with me when I walk my dogs. Um, a bowl, so you, you know you can get this lovely collapsible type bowl or just a regular one for your dog's water. Water, and I use um, proper thermos type flasks and keeps it nice and cool for them um, and it makes sure I've got it. I always have spare water in the car as well just in case we get stuck in traffic or something traveling somewhere and just as important something for me as well because self-care is important you're not much good to your dogs if you're dehydrated um, and you're passed out somewhere and you can't go and you ain't really thirsty but you've not brought any water for you or your dogs um, so make sure that you know you can take a cap with you that you maybe cover up your arms a little bit I've been in the shade pretty much all today um, that you've got water for yourself um, and that you're not overexerting because you need to be able to be fine to help your dog stay fine okay so obviously laying on the ball pool balls is very comfortable for these guys who have a terrier hey <laughs> me um hopefully that's also given you some um some ideas on things you can do with your dogs at home ways to keep them nice and safe obviously if you've got any questions at all i'm always happy to answer questions or, or help you out and i love hearing what ideas people come up with 
So you can always message me at uh, Dog Training for Essex and Suffolk. And in the meanwhile, I would like to say stay safe and I hope you are okay and your dogs are okay as well.